Ahoy mateys and welcome back to Trick Bricks. I'm Jamie and today we're going to continue our 30th anniversary Pirates retrospective series by taking a look at set number 6260, Shipwreck Island. Released in 1989, it contains 71 pieces, two minifigures, and retailed for $12 in the US. This is probably my favorite of the smaller builds released in the original wave, and I'm stoked to share it with you guys. But before I go ahead and put it together, take a look at this awesome base plate we get. I really like the island printing on here, and we'll actually see this used again in this series, in Saber Island. This is a really cool addition that can be used on all sorts of small custom builds, but we're not here to look at custom builds, so let's see what Shipwreck Island is all about. For as small as it is, I'm really digging this set. Again, it's all contained on this awesome 16x16 base plate, and despite its size, there's still a decent amount of interesting elements here. On the right, we've got one of my all-time favorite LEGO builds from days gone by, the jointed palm tree. Today's modern design largely relies on brown Technic connectors to achieve the trunk shape, but in my opinion, these not only look much better, they're more versatile. Thanks to all these joints, you can position this any way you'd like on the fly, without disassembling anything. I really wish LEGO would bring these back, not only because they're simply a better representation of a palm tree, but also because of the price. Due to being discontinued, each one of these segments can cost upwards of 50 cents a piece, which may not seem like much, but it adds up quickly when you're going for a decent sized jungle scene. Moving over, we've got a bit of a rock formation with some foliage growing on top, in the form of these small branch elements, and this tiny cave below that's just the right size for a treasure chest. You can see the yellow tiles here that make it easy to slide in and out. Back when this set was released, tan bricks were yet to be introduced to the LEGO color palette, so instead, yellow was used to represent sand. Inside the chest, we've got a whopping 8 gold coins, quite a bit for such a small set, so our pirates are definitely smart to keep this hidden away. Once back in the cave, we can partially conceal it by positioning this branch down over the opening, although if you really wanted to go for the hidden treasure effect, you could place another headlight brick and branch down here and completely cover it up. I'm actually kind of surprised the designers didn't do this because it not only looks cool, it adds a bit more play value. Anyway, next we've got this little platform, presumably built from the remains of whatever shipwreck Shipwreck Island was named after. Up top, the small Jolly Roger flag waves proudly in the tropical breeze, and there's enough room up here for a few scurvy dogs to keep an eye out for passing ships. And if they happen to spot one that doesn't look too friendly, they can shimmy down here and roll out the big gun. I'm not going to wax poetic of my love for these old cannons since I'd be repeating myself for about the 10th time, but I will say that I really like these little wooden style wheels on the base, a design used in last episode's Black Seas Barracuda. And since we've got a cannon, we're going to need some cannonballs. This set gives us 6, and depending on which part of the world you came from, these were either ammunition or just for decoration. Case in point. This particular style is what's known as a transitional cannon, identifiable by this black handle at the rear. Everything else looks like it should be of the shooting type, but if we give this a tug, we'll see that it is in fact not spring-loaded. During the 80s, in the US at least, certain regulations were placed on toy manufacturers to make their products safer for young children, so the firing cannons became a casualty of the law. But LEGO had to do something before the new, non-shooting molds were ready, so they simply modified the standard cannon with a stop and removed the spring. And that's how this little guy came to be. It would all be for naught though. 
A few decades later, we were back to fully functional cannonball lobbing cannons. Go figure. No matter which version you have though, they all look great peeking out from beneath this platform. And you've even got what appears to represent a bit of sailcloth to cover part of the entrance. But you could also swing this up and pretend it's a wall from which your pirates can shoot behind. And what about those poor, shipwrecked pirates? As I mentioned in the intro, we get two of them here, and the first is this guy. He wears a red bandana, blue striped shirt with belt, and blue pants. And his face print is about as classic as they come, with its bushy mustache and stubbly beard. For weapons, he's given a flintlock pistol and a cutlass. His co-pirate is another iconic minifigure that we'll see quite a few times over the course of this retrospective series. He's wearing white pants, a fancy blue jacket with red and white striped shirt, and a brown tricorn hat. And he must be more concerned with getting off the island than protecting the treasure, because instead of weapons, he's given a makeshift boat and paddle. The boat is just a single piece half barrel element, and my guess is that it was once a crow's nest. You can actually fit both pirates in here, although I'm not sure how far they're going to get on the open ocean in a barrel. And lastly, a bit of local wildlife. Or perhaps these guys were also part of the shipwrecked crew. Either way, I love them both. The printed red parrot is just plain classic, and looks great perched atop the palm tree. And the monkey is even cooler. Four hands and a curly tail make for all sorts of fun ways to pose him around the island. When all said and done, this may just be an entry level set, but it's an excellent entry level set. And if you like what you've seen and want to add it to your collection, it can still be found for a surprisingly reasonable price. According to Brickset.com, the average cost of a used set is only about $17, which is a pretty decent deal considering some of the cool elements you get, such as the base plate, palm tree, and the monkey, just to name a few. I love the whole tropical Caribbean feel of the pirates theme, so this gives me the ability to have a small piece of that on my desk and it can always be counted on to spark a little daydream of sunshine, swaying palm trees, and ocean waves lapping at the sand. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click that thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be back soon with episode 3 of the 30th Anniversary Pirates Retrospective series, so keep a weather eye on the horizon, mateys. Until then, this has been Jamie for Trick Bricks. As always, thanks for watching! Take care and play well.